Hello and welcome to the Tuesday, December 19th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Starting today with an interesting blog post by SecConsult that uh, was looking into SMTP smuggling. And I have to say I was surprised in part not that the vulnerability exists, but that nobody really has discovered it earlier. Maybe someone has, at least I don't remember having seen it. The problem here is similar to HTTP smuggling, which is a well-known vulnerability and, well, uh, sort of uh, borrowed its name here for SMTP smuggling. The problem with HTTP smuggling is where you have conflicting headers as to how long a request is. And then if you have multiple requests in the same TCP connection, well, a middleware like a proxy or so could get confused about where one request starts and the next one ends. The problem here with SMTP smuggling is actually a little bit simpler. In SMTP, we don't have these uh, conflicting length headers. Instead, each email is terminated with a dot on the line by itself. The problem here is, and actually that's also something that sometimes comes up in HTTP, that typically end of the line means carriage return line feed. But, uh, well, sometimes just a line feed is used to indicate the end of a line and the beginning of the next line. And that's sort of uh, where mail servers differ, where some mail servers apparently are taking the line feed by itself as sufficient, while others only look for the combination of carriage return and line feed. The problem now is that a mail server may receive multiple emails as part of one TCP connection. Again, that's somewhat normal. Then verify the headers uh, for DKIM signatures, SPF compliance, and the like. And then, well, uh, forward that email to the next mail server that actually does the final delivery. If the first mail server is getting confused as to where the email ends, for example, it does not recognize a line feed dot line feed as sufficient to end the email, then it may only verify the headers for the first email, forward both emails as part of one TCP connection. The second mail server now believes the first mail server did all of these SPF and DKIM checks and is now delivering two emails because it accepts the dot just terminated by line feeds uh, without carriage return as the end of an email. Pretty uh, tricky exploit here and apparently does happen even in some larger uh, email providers and uh, could easily then be used to bypass SPF, DKIM and similar spoofing protections. Personally, I'm not that terribly worried about the spoofing protections. Like we all know that uh, they're not really perfect, where it would get interesting if this could also be used to avoid these external email headers that some companies are adding in order to warn their employees of uh, impersonation emails that may look like they come from an internal address. And a lot of uh, the attacks against the software supply chain that uh, I've been talking about and lots of people have been talking about are targeting developers at uh, crypto uh, coin uh, software companies. Now, it turns out that at least one of these attacks was somewhat successful. Ledger, who is mostly known for its hardware wallets, is also producing some JavaScript uh, that they're calling the Ledger Connect Kit that allows websites to make it easy for users to connect uh, their wallets. Well, it turns out that an employee of Ledger fell for a phishing email, which then resulted in malicious code being injected into this JavaScript library, which in turn allowed the attacker to steal funds from users using Ledger Connect. Now, I have to point out here that uh, the instant response here really seems to be spot on in the sense that the actual attack only lasted a couple hours before it was discovered, but apparently still 
in that time, a few hundred thousand dollars, actually sort of close to a million dollars, were stolen. Ledger states that they'll help uh, users recover those funds. So lucky that it wasn't more, I guess. And the uh, nice post here by their CEO sort of explaining what exactly happened and what they're going to do about this. And according to an article on Pleeping Computer, who is referring to a number of user forums, the December Windows patch for Windows 11 does break some users' Wi-Fi connectivity. If you are affected by this, well, the obvious fix is to undo these particular updates. I'll link to the Bleeping Computer article in the show notes because they have sort of a good set of pointers which exact patches are affected and need to be uninstalled. Well, that's it for today. Thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.